Hey guys, so I'm going to make my egg bites because I'm out of them. So I figured I would show you guys how I make them. I have showed you guys on another video, but because I make them so regularly and they taste incredible, I'm gonna have you um, see them again today. So I take 10 eggs. I use Vital Farms eggs. So I have 10 in this dozen right here. Let me just crack those all in there. <laughs> Crack them and dump them, crack them and dump them. So I'm gonna have 10 eggs. I have a Vitamix, but you can use a magic bullet. You can use really anything. This is the most simplest recipe, but it is actually the one that tastes the most like Starbucks. Let me grab myself a, a paper towel. I have cottage cheese. I have three quarters of a cup of cottage cheese, which I'm adding in there. I also have in here about a cup of freshly grated cheddar cheese. This one just happens to be um, the um, grass fed, grass finished um, organic cheese from Whole Foods, but I've made it before with cheddar cheese. Um, I've made it before with uh, the, the um, sharp cheddar, and it always comes out phenomenal. And then you just, to this mixture, you just grind up a little bit salt, and then I grind up a little pepper, which reminds me I need to go to the store and get more pepper. And that is basically it for the mixture part. So hang on tight. Okay. Then I'm going to take my phone with me because we are a non-editing <laughs> place here. Um, so here I have my new um, silicone really quick in this tear. My new silicone um, baking muffin tray that I got off Amazon. I'm not sure how this is going to work. I sprayed it. I had to put it, of course, on a baking sheet. And my oven is preheating to, two, uh, to 325 degrees. In the bottom of my oven, the most important thing is to have a tray. I have a 13 by 9 baking pan full of water. And I put that on the lowest rack, and this will go on the middle rack. And basically, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to fill up each one of these muffin. Um, it's not a tin anymore. These muffin silicone holders. And I'm going to basically fill them up. There's 12 of them. And I'm going to fill these up almost all the way to the top. I... They're not even right now because I just want to make sure I have another enough mixture to go through the whole entire 12. And then later on, whatever I have left, I'll just top off to make them all even. Um, but these egg bites, guys, are incredible. They're like 100 and maybe 120 calories, um, less than a gram of carbs. Um, they're just phenomenal. And they're so light and so fluffy. Okay, so I know I have more mix left. So I'm just gonna go ahead and top these all off so that they're even. I'm gonna bake these for about 25 minutes, um, but I will tell you that they're probably done at the 29, 30 minute mark, but I put them in for 25 just so they don't overcook. Now the cheese will settle in the middle and it's gonna make them look like they're raw, but they're not. So you'll see they'll fluff up a little bit. Um, I'll show you guys, of course, when they come out of the oven, exactly what they look like. So it seems as though these will fill up just about to the top. Um, and of course, this is a silicone uh, baking uh, pan, so I'm not quite sure how these are gonna, you know, come out because I've never done it with this before. But 
that's basically it. Those three ingredients plus salt and pepper, beat it up, place it in here. We're waiting until this gets to 325. I'll bake it with the water. That's the biggest thing is the water bath on the lowest level. About 25, 30 minutes, and I will let you guys see how they come. Okay, so these came out. They were exactly 30 minutes, and they don't stick in the silicone, which is great. I was kind of nervous about how they would be, um, but they actually look good. They're fluffy. They're light. Some of them like that were toward the back of the oven, like this one. Looks like it's burnt. Um but I think it'll be fine. So those were the egg so bites. guys, I'm gonna share with you what my husband is making. He is actually making a beef stew and he's using a lot of like unconventional things that people won't really think about. Um, so these are from our garden. All of this is from our garden except for the artichoke hearts and the onions. So he has some diced up um, cherry tomatoes. In here is like, um, there's garlic, uh, cilantro, and uh, peppers. Some are hot and some are sweet. Um, we have okra, which is used as a thickening agent to make the, um, the broth of the um, beef stew thick. We have onions. These are artichoke hearts. There's organic coconut cream, and here is our zucchini now all of this is just cut up really nice and small these aren't going to be used uh, these will be used um, and then i will show you in a little bit what the cut of beef he chose to make in his My husband stew. cut up this was a top round beef roast and he cut it all up in chunks to be put into the um, stew and on here is everything that I showed you. There's peppers and there's cilantro and there's garlic. All of this is just marinating and we have a cover over it. And we are gonna marinate this for about an hour. And then we will combine all the rest of these ingredients in a pan with some water and I'll be back to let you guys know how it looks. All right, guys, so here is how we are starting this beef stew. Now, it's not gonna be traditionally made like you think. Um, normally, I would throw everything into a pot and just let it simmer, or a slow cooker, or an Instapot, but my husband has a very particular way that he likes to do it. So we've been marinating this for almost two hours, actually. I have this pan on medium high, and we're gonna let it get really, really hot in there. And we're actually going to sear the meat. And we're gonna sear it very quickly on each side. You don't want it bunched up. That's why I have a humongous pot here. And we're going to spread this out on the bottom, let it sear very quickly, turn it over, let it sear on the other side. And then we're gonna remove the meat, put it into another pot, and take each of those vegetables that I told you guys about before, the okra and the onion and the zucchini and the tomatoes and the uh, the, um, oh, I forgot what it's called. I'll tell you when I remember. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to take all of that and put it into here and sear that and get that all going. Then I'm going to combine them, add the coconut milk and some water, a little bit of lime juice, and then let that simmer off. And I'll be back to let you guys see the final. Okay, so he is sauteing the onions and zucchini. As I told you guys, we're just going to brown up the meat. Now it's going in okra, and what's that? Eggplant. Eggplant. That's gonna thicken it. That will give it the nice thickening broth that we want in it to. All right, so we added everything back in. There was a bowl of the hearts of palm, which is what I forgot to tell you guys earlier, the tomatoes. And my husband is now gonna put a little bit of lime juice in there. And it smells amazing. So this is just going to simmer probably for about, I'd say an hour. And that's it. This is your thickened beef stew. Delicious, lots of vitamins. So I'm actually going to try something and I'm gonna try it with you guys first. These are zucchini that we got from our garden. 
and I just sliced them on my mandolin. I did end up slicing them a tad bit too thin, but we're actually going to be making chips. So what I did is I preheated the oven to 325 and I have just a regular baking sheet lined with tin foil and I sprayed it with the avocado oil. I lined these up, they cannot overlap, and I'm just going to spray these and then I'm just going to sprinkle some salt. Then as soon as it turns to 325, I'm gonna bake them 15 to 20 minutes. I'll probably end up um, checking them after 15 minutes just to make sure. But basically these should be as crispy as chips. Okay, so we pulled out the little chips that we made out of zucchini. Um, they're brown, maybe a little bit too salty, so we're sending another batch in. Oh, but they're good. Oh, I actually like them a lot. Mmm. So about 15 minutes at 325, turning them over once if you want to. We didn't. Oh, I like them. Okay, so my husband's going to be the one to try our stew for the first time. Wow, that came out good. Yum. Hard to get everything on the spoon. <laughs> Good. Good. Okay. Good morning, everybody. It is another day. I didn't get all my meal prep done yesterday because this one is actually a special meal prep that I'm really excited about doing. It's a recipe. I'm gonna divide it into two recipes, uh, two different flavorings, and so I just wanted to take you guys along for this. So I have each one of these packages. It's the um, organic uh, ground beef from uh, Costco. Each one is uh, one pound in uh, a third. So I have three of them, so it's basically, um, four pounds of, uh, or not four, yeah, four pounds. Yeah, one, two, three, yeah, four pounds of uh, ground beef. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm putting all of the beef in here and I'm going to cook it. When it's almost complete, I'm gonna separate it into two, um, you know, two uh, different amounts. I'm just gonna split it directly in half. This is one of my favorite gadgets um, Erica from Time to Shrink told me to get this. So this, uh, it, I just mashed the meat down and it makes it uh, perfect, just small. It just chops it all up. And I got this on Amazon, but it is sold by P Pampered Chef as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm planning on taking the meat and dividing it in half. Half I'm flavoring Italian and half I'm flavoring Mexican. I'm going to be using my egg crepinis. These are amazing. They have zero net carbs and they sell them in the smaller ones and they now sell them in the big round ones. So I'm going to actually make for the Italian meat, I'm going to make a lasagna layered with these crepinis. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have been making it with the cut the carb and I'm out of cut the carb. Um, but I thought, why not incorporate this in and see how this comes out? And then with the Mexican flavored meat, I'm actually going to use the smaller ones and I'm going to put the meat inside, roll it up, line the pan with, um, I'm making uh, beef enchiladas. And so I'm going to be layering it, um, that kind of style, and then layering with um, onion. You're gonna see some uh, medium onion I will cut up. I do have the seasoning, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, uh, when I add it in for the uh, enchiladas that actually my friend gave me a whole bunch. She's from uh, Colorado and she has it shipped in. So that is the seasoning I'm going to be using for the Mexican enchiladas. And then I will show you guys how I'm going to layer the lasagna in the, um, in the uh, pan with these crepinis. So wish me luck. I've never tried this before. I have no idea how it's gonna come out. I think it's gonna be great, 
but I could use some luck. Okay, so I separated the meat at this point. This one is going to be the uh, Mex the um, Mexican enchilada, and the, no, sorry, the yeah, the Mexican enchilada. I don't even know why I just I just inadvertently opened up this taco seasoning, and I don't need it because I forgot I have my friend's enchilada packets. Oh, guys, it's been, it's been, it's been, it's been. Trying to think which one I'm gonna use. I think I'll use this one. So basically at this point, I'm gonna do both of them separate so I don't get confused. So let's work on the Mexican one. So we're going to add a little bit of this enchilada seasoning mix. And over here, you guys can't see it, it's off camera, but I have a, um, two, uh, a big uh, thing of boiling water. It's not boiled yet, but it will be boiled. And I actually am going to add a little bit of water to this um, just to get it, get it going. I spilled a little bit of seasoning, so we'll put that in there. My husband always says, waste not, want not. Um, so yeah, so we'll put some of that in there. And we're just gonna stir it around. And to this one, I'm gonna add just some Italian seasoning, which is right here. And a little bit of garlic, of course, because garlic, you can never have enough garlic, never. Um, so I'm gonna mix this around. It's not really going to matter too much if I mix the seasonings. So this I'm going to lower because it's already kind of getting all crazy on me. Alright, so to that I have my water here. It's almost boiled and I'm going to actually add a little bit of water to the point of it going right above the meat line. And then it's going to simmer for about 20 minutes. And then I'll be back and show you guys how I'm gonna layer it. Okay, so I'm getting ready to line the, um, the large crepinis with the sauce for the lasagna, the Italian. And so I did add sauce, some red um, spaghetti sauce to this, not too much. And then I have my cheese. I don't have mozzarella on hand, so I'm just gonna use this. And I also usually use like ricotta cheese or something, but the only thing I have on hand is cottage cheese, which is absolutely fine, and that's what I'm gonna end up using. This is such a simple uh, kind of a recipe that it's really, I mean, anybody could really do it. It's, it's uh, whatever you really want. You can do this with veggies, you can do it with meat, you can, However you want to do it, um, there's really no no rhyme or reason. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of a ladle of um, the sauce and meat. And again, this is the Italian one. And then I'm going to line it, uh, this whole bottom here with cheese. A good amount, because you know, cheese is its own food group in my book. Um, and then I'm going to take two more crepinis. And these fit perfect in a 13 by nine uh, pan. And they do stick because they're extremely thin. Let me turn it over and see if that helps. Let's see, yes. Um, and so I'm gonna just lay these on here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do a little bit of the uh, the cottage cheese. You could use um, cream cheese. You could use ricotta cheese. You could not use anything. I'm doing it because it kind of gives it more of a uh, authentic lasagna feel. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get some more of the meat sauce. This actually is turning out, I think, better than I thought it would. This was all just in my head to do since I have done it before um, with the cut the carb. And so I wasn't sure really how this is gonna come out, but I'm gonna tell you that even as I'm assembling it and just the smells and the way that it's sitting in the pan, I can tell this is really gonna be a hit. 
So I'm just going to make, there's just going to be two more layers. So there's going to be this, this layer. And then I'm going to put two more crepinis down. This is really something that I think would be light too, like on our stomach. It's not going to be a heavy type of, um, of uh, recipe. So it's not just going to sit hard um, in, our, in our tummies. I think it'll be really good. I think um, it's definitely um, healthy. It's a great option to be able to, um, let me grab a spoon. It's a great option to be able to um, make no matter what kind of a diet or um, different goals that you have for yourself. Yeah, this is a, I'm glad I, I needed to use up this cottage cheese. Now I'm going to put some more cheese and then I'm going to do my one last layer with the rest of the meat. And I feel like I definitely chose the right amount of meat. Um, and even looking at the other pan for the second uh, enchilada thing that we're doing, I feel like I also uh, chose wisely for that too. Because it's gonna take me some time to assemble the uh, enchiladas, uh, of course I'll do it with you guys on camera, but I'm actually, it's not done yet that meat and so I'm actually going to bake this first and then I'll let you guys see how it comes out. And so now I'm going to do one more layer of the crepini and then I'm just going to cover it with cheese. I'm going to press it down so it's kind of even. Wow guys, I think this is going to be really good. I'm excited. Um, I'm really, really, really excited to try this. I think this is going to be a hit. Uh, I preheated my oven to 350 for both of these um, casseroles. And um, I think that's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna just top it with some um, Italian seasoning and uh, I think this is going to be phenomenal. And only time will tell, but I'm going to bake it and I'll be right back at you. All right, guys. So I'm going to do the enchiladas right now with, of course, the smaller egg crepinis, like I had said. The other Italian lasagnas in the oven baking. So what I do is I took two of the 8x8 um, baking pans and I put a little bit of the uh, meat mixture on the bottom. And I also diced up a medium onion. So I'm just gonna throw a little bit of that on the, on the bottom. So this is gonna be a slower process because I'm actually going to roll these. You don't have to roll them if you feel like you just want to line it like the last one I did, then that should be fine as well. Of course, this is all new. This is all new to me. So I'm gonna take them, I'm gonna use the same cutting board that I have the onions on and I'm gonna here let me flip it around so you can see what I'm doing so basically I am going to roll this let's pull it back and I'm just gonna roll it ever so gently because you know these um, crepini things are very um, thin so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna take a little bit of meat and I'm going to put it down here. See the meat right here? And I'm just going to roll it ever so gently so it doesn't split. And then I'm just going to line the pan. So see, as I have it right here, I'm just gonna line the pan, both pans, and then I'm going to top it with the other ingredients once I have one layer. Hey guys, here's a sneak peek at the meal prep video I'm actually filming right now, which will be out later today. I took egg crepinis and I am making those into, you ready, ready for, for it? it? Enchiladas. Look at this baby. I got them all lined up. I got my onions ready to go. I got my cheese. And inside my oven right now, I have an Italian made with the egg crepinis, but the big ones, 
and it's in there now baking. This is gonna be awesome. All right, so the lasagna is out of the oven. It looks amazing. I haven't let it sit too long because I'm dying to try a piece. So I am going to cut a small piece just so I can try it. Look at that, so cute. The top layer. <gasps> yum, yum, yum. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what the texture is like. Pretty good. Oh, yum. I'd say to add maybe a little extra garlic, but of course, you know, I, you know I'm a garlic-aholic. Very good. The enchiladas are in the oven. When those come out, I'll give them a taste. All right, so this is how the enchiladas came out. They look fantastic. Um, the only thing I would change is I would have taken more of the juice that was in this and put it in there to make it kind of a little liquid thing. But then again, I don't know how the crepinis would do. But here is my first taste. I have some onion, I have the cheese, I have the mixture. Mm. Very good. It's a hit. All right, so somebody wanted to see um, what the um, buffalo chicken dip looks like after I had made it. So this is it. Hope you can see it. The white chunks are just the um, the uh, cream cheese. It smells great. I've been eating it. It's almost gone. Um, today is Thursday and so it'll probably be gone by tomorrow morning. Um, so it lasted about five days and it is as fresh as it was on day one. Um, I do like it after it's been in the refrigerator, at least overnight, um, but this is actually what it looks like. It, it came out wonderful. I've been eating it plain, and I've also been eating it in a cheese wrap. I just take American cheese and melt it a tad, maybe three seconds, and then I just fill it with the buffalo uh, dip and that's how I've been eating it. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this meal prep. I tried to get a little bit of everything in here and I also also uh, also stuck in the little clip from the um, buffalo chicken dip that I made last Sunday. Um, so I hope that if you guys like videos like this, you will hit the like and subscribe button down below. That would help these videos to get out there. I'm trying to build my YouTube channel and uh, I'll see you next meal prep.